Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Good morning. So, first of all, thank good you. Uh, like you know, taking out time and being part of this discussion today. So, uh, quickly, uh, can you just give a, a brief uh, introduction about yourself? So, viewers who will be going through this particular interview, they'll get an idea about your profile. Okay. Uh, no problem. Uh, so, my name is Colin Pinto. I was uh, born and brought up in Dubai. And uh, okay. so I've done my schooling till, uh, so you call it schooling till 12th standard in Dubai. So I'm from a commerce stream. So post my 12th standard, I had come to Bombay to do my graduation. And I've done my graduation in specialization in uh, accounting and finance. So it's it's called PATH in short. And uh, post uh, completion of my graduation, that's when I started getting into a professional line. So my first, very first job was uh, Capita. And uh, Okay. I'll be honest over here, it's not it's nothing related to finance and accounting. Uh, so that was just something to you know uh, 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 get a get a grip on reality of uh, of a working profession. And I used to work in the insurance back office uh, uh, work, and uh, I had I had worked over there for almost one and a half year. So mm -hmm. during my work, I had uh, <clears throat> I got myself enrolled for a postgraduate program from Bellingcurs. So the okay. postgraduate program was called. Uh, Postgraduate Diploma in Financial Management, which was of two years. It's a, uh, it's a, it's not a full time. It's an MBA equivalent, but a part time MBA you can call it. And uh, okay. and yeah, I had worked and studied at that point time, and that's when there was a series of switches in my job after every two three years. I used to work after Capita. I used to work at uh, Barclays, and then from Barclays, I had jumped to a semi government company called National League Government Services Limited, and then finally from there, I had gone to BNP. So during my tenure at BNP, I had enrolled myself for the Certified Management Accounting Program uh, with your institute. And uh, just, uh, uh, I think in, two in 2022, I had given one exam, that was part one. And uh, just this year, I had given part two uh, in the Feb, Jan Feb window, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, in the Feb uh, window. And uh, okay. and yeah, I luckily, I cleared everything in the first attempt. And uh, your I am. We we should congratulate like you know it's uh, like once again we would like to congratulate you for clearing the CME US exam at first attempt. So so Colin, can you just tell me one thing? Like whenever we plan for a certification, especially like you know being a working professional, when we are thinking to get back to studies. So regarding CME US, like was this course like you, was it like you were aware of it or like someone recommended you? And uh, the moment you started with going ahead with the course, so was there any sort of strategies in your mind, like how you need to prepare for it? Because see, like being a working professional, there's at least a gap of 10, 15 years, like, you know, whatever we started during our college days or in post graduation and after 10 or 15 years of work life, when we are getting back to study. So always there is a feeling whether I will be able to cope up with it. I'm sure this feeling even you must be having because this is a very quite like normal feeling for any uh, like professional who is getting back to kind of a certification program. So was yeah. the this feeling within you and what kind of strategies, like what actually made you to go for CME US? Okay, so first I'll talk about uh, what made me go into uh, uh, get myself enrolled in this course. So, so, you know, the feeling of getting a professional degree always sparks within someone during their professional career because you work with, yes. uh, with other CAs, you work with other CPAs or CMAs. So then mm. you have that, uh, you know, just that that kind of epiphany, you can say that, oh, even I want to do this because even I want a, a prefix before my prefix. And I want to be called a CA Mr. Colin Pinto or CMA Mr. Colin Pinto and so on and so forth. So uh, that's when I decided to take up a professional degree. And uh, okay. C CMA was actually, I heard this first through my cousin. He had okay. recommended me to do uh, CIMA, C-I-N-A, which is oh. the which is a counter of uh, the UK uh, version of uh, CMA, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and yes, initially I thought of doing that, but then I thought, okay, ultimately my end goal is, you know, work at an MNC or something like that. And uh, that's when I decided to do pursue US CMA instead of uh, CMA. And why costing? Uh, I always used to love costing uh, subject during my uh, graduation. So we had mm -hmm. cost accounting there and, uh, you know, there was, uh, there was a use of budgets, budgeting was there and... Uh, uh, accounting ratio so all those things were kind of uh, very intriguing and very interesting so that's when mm -hmm. i decided okay i should probably get it. first of all my main goal was i need to get a professional degree by hook or by crook before okay. i turn so that i can grow in my career you know i can grow i can i can tell people that i'm a cma designated or cpa designated mm -hmm. so that was my main goal first before 30 and okay. uh, CMA, cma i took it because i love costing 
and uh, mm -hmm. they were financial analysis issues and all that thing about it. so that's when i decided to do cma uh, cma sorry and uh, yeah that's why i enrolled myself in this you know that was the entire backlog of it and uh, the next question is coming to the strategies that i use to clear the exam so uh, you need to give it time you need to give it time mm -hmm. yeah, during, sure. sure, yes. during you know during weekdays you have to like at least uh, one and a half hour to two hours you need to give it time you can't skip any weekday by any cost if in case you are uh, you know uh, you got a heavy workload or you got reporting or such like that but you need to do it every day at least if you know even during your quarter and month and whatever goes on during the reporting time at least half an hour just to revise at least what you did the previous day something like that was so I, I, I just want to know like see many professional like since this is a course which is majorly pursued by working professionals so there's yeah. always a like you know a concern among them like as you said like no matter how busy you are so do you actually think that it is manageable no matter um how much uh, occupied you are with your work like if you are really determined to do this course like since you have been into that phase so if you, what do you think like it is possible for working professional despite of their hectic schedule to manage cma see it is definitely possible okay what i used to do okay i wow. uh, it's a little embarrassing but i used to listen to uh, either lectures or youtube videos during my travel time Uh -huh. So you know uh -huh. you download these uh you know these small small lectures that come or uh, not small lectures but you know those uh like for example Investopedia they have a very short uh -huh. brief videos on certain subjects yes. and search for it uh -huh. so it's just a matter of like a two three minutes video that uh, gets you at least in uh, in that conceptual uh, clear clearly conceptual what exactly it is so during my travel time okay. I used to sometimes listen to such uh, videos and sometimes even uplifts uh, recorded lectures I used to listen to uh, especially. Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. so the sub subjects where i used to have doubts and all i used to you know uh, listen it over there sometimes i used to take the uh, pdf version of the textbook i used to read it okay. during my travel time so you know i at least mm -hmm. used to i never used to lose lose touch in mm -hmm. my entire seven, uh, seven days work week or five days work week you know i never used to lose touch i used to make it a point to at least read something you know either theory theory you can at least you, you can you just need to listen to theory right for example uh, uh, yes. uh, internal control most of it is theory so you just need to understand concepts so while traveling you can just put on your earphones and just listen to a lecture and uh, you know understand certain subjects like that how much time do you used to give like uh, after your working hours every day so uh, my working hours used to be from 12:30 to 9:00 okay during my time of okay. the and uh, by god's okay. grace uh, we we uh, our work used to be very streamlined we used to come on time we used mm -hmm. to leave on time so and plus we used to have that hybrid uh, working culture so it was not always mm -hmm. traveling we used to sit at home also and work uh, and uh, yeah working at home was the best thing because that's when i used to give more time towards uh, towards uh, studies or towards uh, training you know things like that so i used to at least during weekdays at the most two hours i used to give or at least one and a half hour okay. during weekdays okay. and weekends i used to i used to go all out so weekends i used to sacrifice a lot of my outings a lot of friendships were also sacrificed a uh, relative <laughs> okay, some sacrifices you will have to do if you are planning to have the you know qualification um, like the title if you want to use the title behind your name so certainly there has to be some sacrifices from your end so yeah, yeah, uh, that, uh, yeah that has to that has to you know go without saying because uh, it it won't just come automatically to you without any training and all you won't be able to you know understand concepts without understanding what okay. is the idea okay. behind a particular concept okay. so time you have to give weekdays you know you have to sacrifice some few outings with your friends so uh, <laughs> you can't go drinking out and you know things like that so uh, yeah i mean all those things i did and uh, finally the result showed that the sacrifice really paid off so do you find any difference calling like before like before holding the cma us certification um the kind of work you have you must be doing it and after having the title behind your name now so do you feel there is a difference like cma has added a value to your job role oh uh, no doubt no doubt without that goes without saying uh, definitely i got a lot of uh, calls job opportunities as well uh, through uh, you know various sources linkedin and some few referrals and all and uh, uh, currently i'm working at a job where i negotiated a better a better pay because i leveraged this degree so okay. no doubt i'm better pay position right now it's all because of the degree no doubt and uh, you know uh, uh, switching my job uh, job after went the you know in so getting the standard 30% hike i got a pretty good hike and it's all because of this degree so definitely that's wonderful 
it, it, it did pay a lot. Uh, you know, the ROI on completing this degree is great. It's tremendous. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's all good right now. I'm at a good uh, role. I'm enjoying the job right now. And uh, it's very much into uh, it's into budgeting and uh, fixed assets accounting. Uh, specific. But definitely there's a lot of scope for growth. So I will eventually be planning to move into FBNA, which is financial okay. plan. Okay. That's my end goal. I mean, right now I'm just at that at that learning pace of uh, you know understanding the work. Yeah. So any plan to move outside India? Like, uh, do you have any plans? Of... Um, if any windows open up, definitely plans will be there. And uh, you know, I'm not I'm not done with just the US CMA. I mean, I do. I'm I am planning for the CPA uh, course. Oh, as that's well. wonderful. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but not not so soon. Definitely, probably mm-hmm. that's my plan for next year. Uh, once okay. things are, you know, at my current role, um, you know, the job is settled and I'm able to give some time for any other commitments for other courses. That's when, you know, I'm okay. planning to the USCP. Then finally, I'll be okay. done. <laughs> okay so uh, now like i understand well, like it's been a wonderful journey for you this time like, like you know the way you have shared your experience so now my next i would like to um like you know from you being an uplift student rather being an uplift uh, like you know being a part of uplift so how do you feel like how what the kind of contribution that uplift has made in your cma us journey so if you can just uh, you know share certain points on that so one thing that i loved about you guys is you provide an extensive mcq practice uh, mm-hmm. through that software the questions and uh, the number of questions were very exhaustive i felt uh, uh, that itself was like a huge contributing factor because mm-hmm. obviously i couldn't just you know uh, understand the topic and then give the exam directly you have to give some few practice questions on a daily basis at least for the topic that you've covered and uh, and no doubt the training was also uh, good and uh, you guys had uh, you know personally uh, i had personally requested for a training session for a particular a subject or topic i think uh, uh, rohit rohit batra i think was uh, yes yes yes, yes. That session. one of yeah. the board faculty yeah and uh, luckily that session was good and because i got a, i remember getting a few questions from from that topic at least two or three of them mm-hmm. it was related to i think uh, international uh, international accounting i think yeah there were some a few questions from there but uh, luckily i did go through that session and it was helpful but definitely the mcqs part played, played a huge role and uh, giving mock exams was also one of, it's it, it that's also a point that should be covered in your strategy you know you shouldn't give the exam till you're confident enough to get at least 80% of the questions right out of 100 in the that's answer. correct yes yes so that also played a huge factor because i only uh, <clears throat> i enrolled myself for the exam only after you know getting confident into the mcqs mm-hmm. and uh, i think i had given around uh, three mcqs before uh, giving the actual exam like one month prior to uh, sitting for the exam in Prometric. So, so that was also one of the big helpful factors out there. So, were you and able the, to take the classes, yeah. the live classes? Yeah, I did sit for the live classes. I think uh, so. My main uh, weakness was part one. I mm-hmm. sat for the entire lectures of part one. And, okay. uh, and yeah, it was, it, it, it's helpful, no doubt. The live lectures were pretty helpful. And uh, the main thing I wanted was the doubt sharing sessions. Mm-hmm. Which to have, I think, uh, uh, on on particular weekends, I think you might have kept it. Yes, yes. It's normally during the weekends uh, we have the sessions, correct? So I used to attend those doubt clearing sessions. Also, hear other students' doubts also. So you know, just to get that confidence that okay, I I know this concept and you know, even I could have answered it. So mm-hmm. that was also really helpful. Student engagement during the live sessions was helpful. And uh, um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much. I mean, you guys had covered almost everything in that. <laughs> A sign of uh, training your session, but mostly I would I would stress on the point of uh, the practice MCQs mm-hmm. and the exams. So, so yeah, that that was a yeah. major point. Practice MCQ. I think even our senior mentors have keep on telling to our students, and this this is one of the best strategy if you want to crack CMA US at first attempt. The more you practice, uh, you know your concepts become more stronger on it. And also, speed and accuracy is also something very important in the exam because. Uh, uh, no doubt you'll be able to practice as many questions possible. But if you're not able to clear that question within a particular uh, time limit, then mm-hmm. it makes no sense. You know, you have to like really speed up in your calculations, for example. Uh, mm-hmm. Certain theory questions, you know, there are very uh, there are small keywords in that question that you need to get mm-hmm. a hold of, especially okay. for such uh, scenarios like, for example, 
internal control, there are a lot of twisting questions. And okay. if you don't get that uh, keyword in that question, you end up, you know, choosing the wrong option, and then you lose that mark over there. Because all the all the question, all the options seem right according to the mm. scenario, but there are certain twists in the scenario that you need to recognize as early as possible. So that is also something that only comes with practice and only practice and understanding the concepts very clearly. So what I used to do is I used to uh, I used to give importance to a textbook also. So okay. blind one okay. and. Uh, you know, I used to mark, I used to highlight some few key sentences, you know, that, mm -hmm. for example, uh, uh, for ethics, I think there was some new uh, edition that had come recently, I think two year, uh, one year back. So, uh, so there were some few uh, key words that uh, you need to grasp in that textbook. And based on those keywords only, you will apply it in your exam and that's when you get the, the answer right. So that was also a major contributing factor. You need to read the textbook as well. At least a brush up in the textbook is needed for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Colin, coming to an end of uh, today's discussion, so is there uh, any valuable feedback for our uh, students who are pursuing CMA US or for students like the professionals and academic students who are thinking to do this course? So is there any special message that you would like to convey for, through this video today? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, everyone's under the notion that since it's an MCQ exam, it can be easily cracked. But that's not the case. You have to give it time. It is a professional degree. It is a respectable certificate, which is globally recognized. So you need to put in the time and effort for it. Every day, you have to give it time. Weekdays, you need to go all out. Again, you have to make some few sacrifices, you know, outings and such. Mm -hmm. At least four hours continuously during the weekdays to understand certain topics. And uh, I feel you can clear it within the duration of six months but uh, let's say within the year though you should be getting the degree clearing both the exams understanding of key concepts is important no doubt your mentors your teachers will be there to support you but uh, sometimes you need to you know like actually put an effort on your own understanding through google by typing certain uh, you know by uh, by searching uh, certain topics on google itself will give you some few concepts that will ensure that you you know uh, understand it by your own self or real life examples, for example, financial statements that you can get online very easily for any company. Understanding of those financial statements is something I think part two was uh, covering uh, financial ratios and also using mm -hmm. that ratio right. in, the, in the real world, you know, is actually helpful to understand concepts. Uh, working professionals, uh, you guys have to give at least one and a half hour every day during weekdays. And during your weekdays, again, I'm repeating myself, no doubt, but during the weekends, you need to go on. And, uh, Understanding the lecture is fine, but practicing MCQs is equally important. You know, you have to give at least a, a full mock on subject on topic wise mocks should mm -hmm. be given. That is really, really, really helpful to me because I kept practicing a lot of questions in every topic. And that was a major contributing factor, major contributing factor for me to clear that exam. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh... Yeah, so it definitely CMA US is achievable and possible. What do you think? It is definitely achievable. It is definitely possible, no doubt. But you need to give it time. It is not as easy. It's, it, it is not as easy, but it's not as tough either. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you give some time for it? Yeah, definitely. The time, yeah, you should. You should give that time and dedication if you're planning to, uh, like, you know, power crack the exam at first attempt. Fine, yeah. Colin. Thank you so much, uh, you know, for uh, coming up for this interview and uh, sharing your feedback, your point, your journey. So we wish you once again all the best for your future endeavor. And I hope more success comes your way. And all the best for your CPA also. And uh, thank you. Thank you once again. Thanks a lot, Kalyani. Thanks a lot to your institute. You guys have been very helpful. It's all because of you guys that have cleared the exam. And uh, I'm really honored to do this interview. I hope this uh, this helps the other Oh, I'm sure. sure. I'm sure it will definitely. It will definitely because you have shared the, the points which actually could be an encouragement for all our students and aspirants who are thinking to do this course. Thank you. Thank you once again. Yeah, it is definitely achievable, no doubt. Just need to put in some time. We need to put in some effort, a little sacrifice, and it, it goes a long way. Finally, I'm at a very good place right now. I'm really happy, and uh, I'm proud to say that my name is CMA Colin <laughs> Wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the best. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Kalyani. Bye-bye. Thank Have you. Nice day. You too. You too. Bye.